welcome and good afternoon from Ladies of Another View on Back. We have a big day planned again, as, us as usual. Um, today we have Jan as our co-host and Patty, and we have a guest today, Tammy Eibach. Tammy is with the North Dakotans for Comprehensive Energy Solutions. She actually grew up in the Beck um, territory oh, yeah. down in Linton. She's a Linton lion, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. And we will also be joined by Bob Harms. He is also um, with North Dakota's Comprehensive Energy Solutions. He is the policy advisor and he was also the chief counsel for Governors Hoven and Schaefer. Um, Tammy is the director for the North Dakotans for Comprehensive Energy Solutions. Um, Bob's going to be with us real shortly, but before we get started today, this is a, a sad day in media history. We have lost a good friend of ours, Rush Limbaugh. Um, it's, you know, he suffered from lung cancer, but you know what, he worked hard for the people until his dying breath, to be honest. I mean, it was, he was still on the radio as of last week. He would come on and he was weak and everything, but I just had a feeling during the um, presidential election when he came in and he sat there and he was on Fox News that evening, I just knew that um, they, br they brought him on because it was probably the last election he would ever live through. And so it's really tough, but um, you know, he has brought so many people into conservatism and he's, he explains it and explained it in such um, conversational manner that we could all understand it. And I guess that's what we're gonna miss. He's gonna, big shoes to fill. But um, he was actually, he had 200 million listeners. He was on over 600 affiliates. Um, and uh, in February of 2020, uh, President Trump awarded him with the Medal of Freedom. And that actually happened during the State of the Union. And it was unprecedented and people didn't understand why he was given that honor during um, during a State of the Union. It was completely unheard of. But he's had so many different awards. I just want to read, um, the Presidential Medal of Freedom is an award bestowed by the President of the United States to recognize people who have made an especially meritorious contribution to the security or national interests of the United States, world peace, cultural, or other significant public or private endeavors. The Presidential Medal of Freedom and the Congressional Gold Medal are the highest civilian awards of the United States. So kudos to him, but you know, if you go onto his webpage, um, the list of the awards that he was given are absolutely endless. He did have a book out, and I wanna talk a little bit about that. It was called The um, Rush, Revere, and the Brave Pilgrims, and that was put out in 2014. And on my way into town today, a gal had called in, they were, they were doing some older shows just in tribute to him uh, today. And they will un indefinitely, is what they said on the radio, indefinitely they're going to be doing some older shows just to tribute him until they feel that it's time for someone to fill his shoes. And he does have some great guest hosts, I will say that. But uh, Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims, this lady, she's, she was an immigrant and she was working on getting her citizenship in, in uh, 2018. And she said she bought that book just to help herself understand American history and to help learn the language. And at that time she was trying to um, become a citizen. But uh, another notable, uh, he was Barbara Walters' 10 Most Fascinating People. He was Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. He was Forbes Magazine's Most Powerful Celebrities in the United States. Um, he was given all kinds of journalistic awards. So I just, I just, we couldn't go, we, we couldn't go forward with the show with, without giving him a small tribute. But if you ladies wanted to just add a real short, before we get into our main topic, which is energy today, if you guys want to just give a brief statement or, or uh, what went through your head today. Well, Rush always said that he had talent on loan from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think he used his blessings well. Um, he was a national treasure, the likes of Paul Harvey and Mr. Rogers, and we will miss him. I was going to say the same thing about uh -huh. talent on loan from God, but he also at the end talked about that his relationship with Jesus Christ was why he could accept whatever is meant to be is meant to be. And I was amazed towards the end um, how he would come on the radio, and I thought, man, he's just acting like just another day 
and yet he knew he didn't have he very, very long. Young. So that he was an inspiration just seeing how he what he didn't face death with fear. He would talk about it. True. Tammy, do you want to jump in? Oh, for sure. Thank you, Mary. Yes, he's been a, a hero of mine for a very long time, and primarily because he forced me to think, took me outside that box of just listening to what everyone around me was telling me, but forced me to think on my own. And for that, he will go down in my heart with tremendous admiration. Perfect. All right, well, we're going to jump forward into energy. Uh, this week has been a pretty tough week for pretty much the entire nation. Um, started up here with our cold temperatures in the 20, 30, 40 below actual temps, um, not including the wind chill. I mean, honestly, it was 60 degrees colder outside than it was in our freezers. That's how cold, now that's cold. Wow, yeah. So isn't it, when you put it into perspective. Yes. yes. But, uh, you know, with that being said, um, there's been a tremendous loss down in the Texas or, and through, throughout the Midwest. And we all know now, or most people here in the area have experienced some rolling blackouts because we are giving energy to the South. And maybe, Tammy, can you kind of uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on in that situation? Well, for North Dakota to experience rolling blackouts, maybe we want to summarize it by saying that we're being that good neighbor that we're taking those 45 minute blackouts per household bundled together, allowing it to go on the um, Southwest Power Pool grid so that it can connect to the ERCOT grid in Texas and provide some power there. That's being neighborly in essence. But, the, but North Dakotans are questioning why is it happening? And that's it's a big question in the ERCOT system is Texas's own power grid, where in North Dakota, we belong to two tra regional transmission organizations. And this is generally Bob Harms's forte to talk about. So I'll tee it up for him, which is MISO and, and um, SPP, the Southwest Power Pool. So we have a graphic to show so people can see where those, those regional transmission organizations are so with that, I'll turn it off over to Robert Arms. Bob, are you with us? Okay, oh. um, we're having a little bit of trouble, and I think we can chalk that oh, up to the can. weather as well. But uh, <laughs> Bob will be joining us later. But uh, so when you talk about this this map, is the energy going right through the yellow part and ending up in Texas, or are we helping people out along the way? We're helping. We're helping some people out along the way, but the. Look at, it, look at it like a big, long extension cord. So we're getting transmission from North Dakota that's dropped down into what that's called ERCOD, which is the Electrical Reliability Council of Texas. That's their power grid. And what happened beginning on Monday, when Texas started to experience that big cold spell, the wind turbines there slowed down. And by, by statistics, that was 43 gigawatts of electricity, but more so 67 gigawatts of electricity went out of coal and natural gas and nuclear. Okay. For the first time in history, or history, the nuclear, nuclear plant in Texas shut off too. Oh, that's amazing. So they lost a lot of gigawatts of energy at one time. And we've all seen the movie The Perfect Storm, yes. and that created The Perfect Storm. Okay. We're going to have to get back to The Perfect Storm right after these messages. Thank you for joining us on Ladies of Another View on Beck. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. 
Did you know the Foundation for Rural Service awards scholarships for rural students? The scholarships range from $2,500 to $7,000. Go to www.frs.org for information and applications. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments, so you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentist.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. Forty years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID-safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. We were able to catch our friend Bob out there from Williston. This is Bob Harms. He is the policy advisor for North Dakotans for Comprehensive Energy Solutions. And uh, as I said earlier, he served as a chief counsel for Governor Schaefer and Hoven. Welcome to the show, Bob. How's it going in Williston? Very good, thank you, Mary. Hey, you bet. Oh, thanks for joining us. I know we had a little trouble getting you up on the first uh, segment, but why don't um, we kind of jumped in. We talked a little bit about uh, a tribute to Rush Limbaugh, and then we talked a little bit about um, the cold weather up here and how we're trying to help Texas. But why don't you explain to me what the North Dakotans for Comprehensive Energy Solutions is? Tell me what that's all about. Well, it's a, a nonprofit organization. It's been in North Dakota. It's going on five years this fall. And um, our primary objective is just public education about uh, energy generally. Uh, we're wind biased, uh, favor wind, but we uh, favor an all of the above energy policy for North Dakota and, uh, and the region. And so Tammy and I have been working together for the last four and a half years and trying to help um, County commissioners, members of the public, school superintendents, um, PSC members, uh, how wind works, what it does for our state and what it contributes to our economy and to the electric uh, supply of our uh, country. Well, honestly, when you, when you talk about wind and you think about wind, we are one of the windiest states. And so it's probably a good location for wind energy. But I think this week was the, um, we were talking about it being the perfect storm where we find that we probably can't rely just 100% on any one energy, that there has to be a good mix for this, this good old country to keep rolling. That's right. And, and that's something, a message that uh, Tammy and I have been trying to help the public understand and public officials so that we can make the right long-term energy policy decisions and development decisions for our, our state, our region, and frankly, for the country. All right. We probably have some questions here from the hosts. So how is North Dakota then different than Texas? as far as our, our energy consumption, our energy supplies? Well, we're, we're, like, we're like Texas in the sense that we use a, a variety of uh, energy sources for electricity. 
Um, we're very different in terms of our transmission and how it's managed. Uh, the Texas transmission grid is essentially run by a state entity. It's called ERCOT. It's the Energy Re Electricity Reliability Council of Texas, and they manage essentially the uh, grid uh, inside of Texas itself. Um, North Dakota is very different because we have, and those organizations are called RTOs, regional transmission organizations. North Dakota is very different um, from Texas in that we have two RTOs that manage the North Dakota grid. I think we have a, a visual that we can show your viewers, but uh, our two regional transmission organizations uh, one is SPP, that's the one that's uh, operating these uh, rolling electrical shortages or rolling blackouts that uh, we're experiencing right now. And uh, that's really uh, designed uh, an effort uh, from SPP to protect the electric grid and help uh, ERCOT or Texas, if you will, uh, get through this winter storm that uh, is assaulting the uh, southern part of our country, the southern and eastern part of our country. Um, the other uh, RTO is MISO, that goes east and south all the way to Arkansas. And those two organizations essentially run our electric grid. Uh, they're very sophisticated organizations, do lots of uh, computer modeling, studying, lots of engineering analysis as to why the grid does what it does, uh, what improvements we need to make in order to uh, bring on a new generating facility, whether it's in uh, southeastern North Dakota or Iowa or Michigan or some other place. Uh, there, so, there, so that's uh, that's the uh, one of the key differences. The other difference is um, the Texas electric market is uh, uh, largely unbundled, and so you have in Texas you have um, the generators uh, is one part of their electricity supply. The wires are owned by another entity. Uh, and then you have the retailers who uh, are, are also part of a separate uh, group within the market. Uh, whereas in North Dakota, uh, MDU owns its generation, it owns its uh, wires, and it uh, owns its, I mean, it provides the uh, customers uh, its power. That grid that uh, I just referred though is managed by uh, MISO for MDU and with uh, base on some of the others uh, SPP. So that's the that's the big difference. Maybe long longer winded than you might have wanted. <laughs> it tells you what you need to know. So, exactly. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. I I have a question. Um, I know I know you don't represent Texas, but obviously being in wind energy, you're probably paying close attention. That um, the wind turbines have really been beaten up by a lot of people. Like, oh look. Look what happened to Texas. They rely yeah. too heavily on their wind turbines. And I heard it was 25% of their energy. And is is that part of the problem that they were relying too heavily on the turbines? Uh, no. You know, I, it, 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 or, Tammy, did you have something? Well, I was just going to say, that's not a true statement. I think that wind is sometimes referred to. We, we take all of the hits. And as I, as I said in the earlier segments, they have nuclear and they have natural gas as well. And while wind did shut down in Texas, so did nuclear and so did natural gas. And that's what created, I think, in my opinion, this perfect storm. And so as you have natural gas, it takes a pipeline to get natural gas to a peaker or a plant. And though in North Dakota, we have those pipes insulated because we're North Dakota. Right, in right. In Texas, they don't insulate those pipes. And as all of us that live in the northern tiers, we know what happens if you don't insulate pipes. They're going to freeze. And so thus it creates this perfect storm. But natural gas and coal and nuclear create more energy in Texas than wind on most given days. So. So and, if, and everything had, add, if everything had, if everything had worked perfectly, and I'd add to that, I guess the uh, I, I'm troubled by the 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 assertion that is going on nationally that oh look uh, what's going on in Texas is because they uh, were relying on wind. That's uh, very misleading for the public. It's the wrong message, and it's it's and it's wrong by factually what happened. So that's first point. Second point, Tammy's right. So what happened in Texas is this winter storm. 
uh, came in. Texas is prepared to operate in uh, hot temperatures, 100, 110, 120 degrees. They're not the design and they didn't plan for operating in frigid weather. And so what happened was natural gas supplies started to go down because of the things that Tammy just mentioned. Um, homeowners and businesses were calling for natural gas supply because they wanted more heat in their homes. That took away natural gas from the power plants. So power plant uh, started to shut down. And, and that's true. Wind uh, turbines did uh, freeze up about, depending upon which reports you look at, either from 25 to 50%. But um, the ERCOT reported that the amount that wind was projected to uh, develop in winter was actually exceeded here in these last few days. Sure. So it's really misleading. Yeah, we understand that. That's um, yeah. uh, We're going to have to um, pick up where we left off. We've got to take a quick break here, Bob. The segment okay. just got away from us. But so we're going right. to be... Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Communications is hiring. Beck Communications is seeking qualified candidates for plant technicians in our Wheatland, North Dakota location. Beck Communications is an equal opportunity employer. To view the job details, visit www.beck.coop. To apply, email your cover letter and resume to careers at bechtel.coop. Beck Communications, making connections that matter. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. If you're a Beck Fiber customer or the dependent of a Beck Fiber customer, you might qualify for scholarships. Beck awards scholarships to seniors headed to college or to students attending University of Mary. Go to www.beck.coop for eligibility guidelines and applications. Experienced professionals at Superior Glass provide residential and commercial glass installation and repair services in central and western North Dakota. Superior Glass is your source for stained glass projects, mirrors, windows, touchless, and automated entry solutions. Stop by and see us at 3323 East Broadway in Bismarck or call us at 701-258-5600. Superior Glass, where you get superior service for less. Bye for now. Did you know the Foundation for Rural Service awards scholarships for rural students? The scholarships range from $2,500 to $7,000. Go to www.frs.org for information and applications. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View. And we are here with the North Dakotans for Comprehensive Energy Solutions. And we're so thrilled to have you both here because there's so much knowledge and we just want to make sure that any misinformation is correct because wind energy is a good thing all energy and north dakota is a huge state and we have all kinds of energy to share but uh, we were talking a little bit on the break about why the turbines didn't work specifically and 
it's not because they were poorly built, but there was ice on them. And it's really no different than when you have to de-ice an airplane. Okay. And uh, like Tammy had said, it was the perfect storm in going into this. But Bob, was there something that you wanted to finish from the last segment? Well, I, I, I wanted to just visit a little bit about the rhetoric uh, attached to electricity and energy generally in, in America and, and in North Dakota. And I think it's, it's really counterproductive because it doesn't help us solve problems. Um, take, take, for example, Texas. The Texas experiment, I mean, I've dealt with some colleagues that were on a, a, a panel for NERC that assessed what happened a few years ago during the, the uh, um, uh, polar vortex in 2014, 2015. And, and they made a variety of recommendations to Texas, including um, insulating uh, power plants, natural gas power plants, uh, taking care of pipes and valves so that they'd operate in uh, rigid conditions. Uh, and now we have uh, some sectors of our country saying, oh, it's all because of wind. And it doesn't help us figure out, you know, how can we keep electricity running in America. We, nobody in North Dakota wants to see somebody in Minneapolis go without power. We don't want to see people in Texas without power. But we have this um, argument, uh, and it's very, uh, I think, destructive in, in our country about, oh, well, black energy is only the kind we want, or no, we should only have green energy, when the reality is we should have a mix of energy that uh, allows us to continue to operate uh, clean coal-fired power plants in North Dakota that are providing some of the electricity in Texas and develop wind uh, for those who uh, want to host those wind farms and provide the economic uh, opportunities for rural America. We ought to be able to do all that. And the, the troubling is the, the, the toxic rhetoric that uh, surrounds it and the misinformation that uh, gets spread uh, Sure, sure. You know, there's there's lots of talk out there about an individual in Minnesota buying one of the coal powering stations here in North Dakota and then shutting it down so that he can make a political run in his home state. How do those decisions affect North Dakota? Do we need to have control over ownership of things like that? Well, I, I don't I don't know that uh, we have the opportunity to um, make that decision about owning um, a, a a private facility. If I own a uh, whether it's a grain elevator or a bank or, a, or or a power plant or a gas plant, those are those are, those are private assets, and um, I don't think we've reached the point in this country where um, the government is going to. Uh, own those assets because they don't like a potential buyer. Um, I don't think that's underway. But I will say what's going on and what will happen with regard to Coal Creek. It goes back to MISO, that uh, regional transmission organization that manages the grid going east and south. Um, before Coal Creek uh, can be remissioned uh, or, or closed, MISO goes through uh, an analysis to make sure that our electricity grid has the ability to uh, either keep that power plant in place or replace it with some other uh, generating source. And those studies are underway and, and nothing's gonna happen with that power plant until or unless those studies confirm that uh, the electric grid and the uh, uh, generation that we all rely on uh, is, uh, is uh, available. I have two very quick questions that should have short answers. Um, the first one is, what is the ideal, our, what's your goal for the percent of wind energy for North Dakota? And the other one is, at, what's the lifespan of these wind turbines and what do you do to reclaim them or retire them? The goal with North Dakotans for Comprehensive Energy Solutions and the number of wind turbines, the, we don't want to control that. The market should control that. The demand for power, the demand for wind power, will be controlled by what the market wants. So we, we live in North Dakota. We love free market systems. So let that be the control. And then your second question, Patty, was? Um, a lot of criticism I hear about the wind turbines is that they have a lifespan. Oh, I want to know how are. long that lifespan is. And then what do you do to retire them? The average lifespan of a typical wind farm in North Dakota is estimated out at 25 years. But often in, 
in the time that a wind farm is there, as an example, the wind farm in Ashtabula over in Griggs County has been around since 2004, and they've done upgrades to those turbine heads. So they're doing remodels, upgrades all the time to, as technology advances. That's happening all across the country. And then we have private industry who is stepping up to create um, recycling and landfills for those wind turbines because when you take them apart, there's fiberglass on the outside, but plywood in the inside. So much of that is recyclable. And again, free market is looking at ways to recycle them, to do it properly. Okay, so um, coal has been a part of the nation's infrastructure and is certainly helping deliver much of the nation's electricity today. How will this impact our energy system long term? I guess whoever wants to take that question. Bob? Well, I, I think this is actually going to be good for our coal industry, and, and I hope it is. Uh, I hope we can get over the rhetoric and uh, start looking at solutions. But I, I, one of the things that I think will help is that the, this impact to the south and the eastern part of our, the southern eastern part of our country, I think demonstrates the need that we do have to have a diverse energy supply for electricity, including nuclear, gas-fired power, or coal-fired power plants. Um, the challenge that they've had uh, is uh, in the market, we have a production tax credit. That's federal tax policy. That doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Um, and, but in addition to that, um, base load power isn't rewarded in the market. Now, the coal industry has tried to get MISO and SPP to reward them for having this base load capacity that's providing electricity uh, in these last few days. And this may give, I think, the industry an opportunity to make a better case to the market as a whole to reward them for having that, that um, base load generation that sits there and is available to uh, turn up when uh, the power demand is is made. One of the questions, that, and I'll make this quick, uh, one of the questions becomes, well, if they're paid for that residual capacity, who pays for it? Does, does the North Dakota consumer, does the North Dakota taxpayer, or do a number of states around the regions uh, help pay for that baseload that provides power uh, as demonstrated today? Interesting. And so, um... One of the questions that a lot of people ask is wind, um, is wind basically going to transition away from the coal energy? Or do you think they're, they're going to be compatible for decades to come? They should be compatible for decades to come, absolutely. In North Dakota, we want to continue that philosophy of being an all of the above energy provider. North Dakota has wind. We have an abundance of coal in the ground. Let's utilize those resources and export them to markets who want them. Or need them. Or like, need them, you know, absolutely. You always think, you know, and I, God bless Texas. You know, I have friends down there. I just feel so bad because this is really trying for a lot of people. I have friends that their pipes are completely froze solid. And it's just a testament to North Dakota. People think we're such a little state and nobody really knows anybody from North Dakota. But we're really saving the country right now. We are really in the business of saving the Midwest with energy services. And that's based on our wind, our coal, and our um, uh, energy, or our, excuse me, our oil energy. And so that's a big testament to North Dakota. Sure. Robert has a, has a comment that he likes okay, to use. We let's, have about 20 seconds. Go let's ahead. Let's keep North Dakota the energy basket of America. Absolutely. It's just that simple. The bread basket yeah. and the energy basket yeah. of America. Yeah. So I want to thank you both for coming on. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but uh, this is a topic that is interesting and will never go away. So thank you, both of you. And we'll be right back after these messages on Ladies of Another View on VAC. Howdy folks, it's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattle and pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. 
Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial-grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware, we sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran-owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Did you know the Foundation for Rural Service awards scholarships for rural students? The scholarships range from $2,500 to $7,000. Go to www.frs.org for information and applications. If you're a Beck Fiber customer or the dependent of a Beck Fiber customer, you might qualify for scholarships. Beck awards scholarships to seniors headed to college or to students attending University of Mary. Go to www.beck.co for eligibility guidelines and applications. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. We have Andrea joining us. Uh, she's Hi, down everyone. in Florida as usual, but we couldn't fit too many people on the screen at once, so she was patiently waiting for us. Um, it's, been, it's been a tough go up here, but uh, things are getting brighter. But I want to go straight to, I was going to skip this, but I, I, I just can't skip it. We have a cute little video. I would just want to show our viewers this little gal who saw snow again for the first time. Can we go right to that? So that to me was so adorable because, you know, a lot of um, the countryside has been having a tough time with all of the snow, but it's just great to see that some people are able to enjoy it and if she can get out there and sing to Elsa. But I just wanted to touch base, you know, because this isn't just affecting people and businesses. Um, it's a it's a touching farmers and ranchers. That is the breadbasket of America, it really is, and it goes all the way down to Texas. So I just wanted to give a tribute to this Paul Harvey video, if we can take a look at that. God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay, wire feed sacks and shoe scraps 
who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and tie the fleece, and strain the milk. Somebody who'd bail a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing. Who would laugh, and then sigh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. So that's pretty touching. <laughs> there's, uh, there's people who are losing their entire income because they lost their crop because of this storm. So it goes a lot deeper than just frozen water pipes. I used to be an insurance adjuster, so I see that side of it. But when we're talking a devastating storm like that, and you know, the winter wheat is coming up down there. And if they lose their crop, then what? So this touches hearts. You know, we, we sit here and complain that we lost electricity for an hour or two, or maybe even three or four, but these people, they're hurting. They don't know how to water their cattle. I mean, cows do lick snow, I will give them that. But their waters are froze up. They have no electricity. They have no way to, um, to provide. I mean, the, the animals are out there and, and we breed animals up here a little bit differently. We, we get genetics going so that we have a hardier cattle. We have hardier, you know, hogs, chickens, you name it. We're hardier up here. That's just the way it is. But uh, I just, it's such a devastating situation right now. But um, Andrea, have you, I mean, what are the trees like there? I mean, I know it's not as cold in Florida, but isn't this when the fruit trees start blossoming towards the south a little bit? Um. I would assume that they probably are. I haven't taken the trip, the road up to Arcadia in a little bit yet, but uh, it is getting to be spring. I know that because my allergies are off the charts, so it's not cold here yet. Not cold, right? Mm -mm. But I will say that I do think it's very different in the South where, um, like, like you were saying, where the cattle are hardier in North Dakota, but a lot of things are just built differently. So for example, the water lines to your house, they're not buried feet under the ground, they're inches under the ground. So it doesn't take much cold for things to freeze and for there to be pretty significant damage. Certainly. Just because it's not built for it. Right. Right, and for others, you know, the, when the power's back on, a lot of their inconveniences will be over but for the farmer, he's going to have the aftermath of that, right? Absolutely. Like now, what do we do with our crops and our how many of the livestock have died, or you know? I think we're all going to feel the aftermath. You know, if they suffer, we suffer. Right. You know, we have all of these people trying really hard to feed a nation, and you know, if they don't have a crop to come in and they lose their income for a year, then there's no truckers that are hauling grain. Um, then the truckers go find another job and then when we need them um, later on, we don't have them to deliver groceries to the grocery store and, and we're going to feel the impacts everywhere. It could cause a food shortage in our country that they're already predicting in this dark winter. It is. It certainly has. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> taken on its real name of a of a very dark winter in more ways than one. And it's. I guess Americans are resilient. We will get through this. We know that. But um, we've always said, you know, when the farmers are hurting, Main Street hurts because even for the state of North Dakota, farming and agriculture is the number one business. Everybody thinks it's energy. And it's not. So if you can imagine that. So if you can imagine states down south like Texas and uh, you know Oklahoma, Kansas, going through this tough time, it's going to be a tough road ahead for them. They can double crop down there. So I will give them that, absolutely. So hopefully they can replant something. And I, I did talk to my husband about the winter wheat. And sometimes when you have the ice and snow on it, it insulates it. So the jury's still out. We don't know what's going to happen down in Texas, but we can just, just pray for them and for everyone, for that matter, that, uh, that they get through this mess. 
Mary, bringing it to North Dakota, because you farm and ranch, even when we get into these frigid, frigid temperatures, we forget, you know, there's yes. there's cows out there and oh, there's people chickens. people are calving right what, now. Ta yeah, what is that like? Well, with wet baby calves, if you don't catch them when it's 40 below, the ears, they freeze their ears, they freeze their tails if they live at all. Some of, Sometimes you go out to do a night check and, and a calf might be frozen to the ground and, and you might have just checked a half hour earlier. And mm -hmm. so it is devastating and people don't understand, you know, they kind of make fun of the, you know, farmer and it's like, I... I, if anyone could step into the shoes of a farmer or a rancher for a day, they would soon learn that it's a lot tougher than just the guy driving down the road with a baseball cap. That's not what it's like. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's hard work. It takes a dedication. That's why a lot of people aren't getting into it. There's a lot easier ways to make an income out there. Uh, you know, the, the, there's a lot of work. That, that's attached to it, but um, this is a tough time because in North Dakota right now, some people are starting to calve already, and you have to have a lot of barn space for that. You have, a, have to have a lot of bedding. Um, the nice thing about it is we've been able to graze later this year, so that is a blessing for North Dakota. So it's kind of funny how when something's bad on one hand, there's always a blessing on the other, and we always go back to that, a blessing, blessing versus a curse. a curse, and you just don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. I guess we just have to do a little bit of wait and see and pray hard. Absolutely, and I think we're all pretty good at that. Um, and, you know, we just look forward because, and, and, and the farmers, you know, it's always, well, there's always next year. Like Paul Harvey said, well, there's always next year. And, uh, but how many years can you go backwards, right. yeah, you know, with true. the economy right now? It's been, it's been very tough for farmers. Well, I know, I know uh, one of our priests, Father Dan, I'm forgetting his last name, but he got out of farming. It was like year after year after year, he, that, that next year never came and he got out and things did turn around for his brother. But yeah, you can't always count on the next year. Yeah, so he jumped from farming into a life of poverty as a priest, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but we need good priests, and I'm sure he's uh, an excellent one. But uh, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break right now, and we're going to come right back after these messages on Ladies of Another View on Beck. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments, so you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentist.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. The experienced professionals at Superior Glass provide residential and commercial glass installation and repair services in central and western North Dakota. Superior Glass is your source for stained glass projects, mirrors, windows, touchless, and automated entry solutions. Stop by and see us at 3323 East Broadway in Bismarck or call us at 701-258-5600. Superior Glass, where you get superior service for less. Bye for now. 
Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. This brings us to our lighter side, and uh, that was a tough segment, that last one. But this next one, I can envision Andrea's family doing this, so let's cut to it really quick. It's a cold. a little bit lonely no one's ever coming round third lockdown 2021 we bet we'd all be outside but i'm still listening to the sound of their tears third lockdown every day i'm treated like i offer room service but they mess it in the blink of an eye third lockdown every now and then we get a little bit terrified of when we think she's gonna let fly third lockdown time flies struggling to tell the days of So that, that uh, video is actually four and a half minutes long, but I didn't want to waste all of our time on it. But we're going to load it up on our um, Facebook page so you can get back to that. But Andrea, I thought of you and your kids. <laughs> but I know Florida is pretty much an open state, but I just thought it was endearing. The, uh, these people have so much talent, and really? they're trying to do things during the COVID, and uh, they came up with that song, almost like yesterday's song. I think that That's they were so from great. where, United Kingdom or yes. something? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I could hear the accent just a little bit, but wow, some of those kids, they oh, were amazing. Yeah. Strong voices. Absolutely. And um, our kids, we, we have 10, a lot of them played guitar and, and piano, and they would do a little band. Sometimes they were out places at talent shows, and I thought all the beautiful voices and the talent for them to put those words together. I just imagine them sitting around the table figuring out the lyrics, because that was very clever. Oh, the writing was excellent. <laughs> Truly. The, <laughs> I don't know if I count music among one of our family family talents, but humor might be. But they're pretty, <laughs> those kids are funny, though. Oh, like they that. were. Well, you'll have to watch the entire thing. It's it's four and a half minutes long, and I didn't want to take too much time uh, to watch it, but uh, we will have it available. But I just think it's, it just goes to the testament of how hardy people are, and they're trying to get through this COVID thing. But, you know, it's time to, time like she said, it's time to get in the car. It's time yeah. that we break out of our chains. And well, some of us Amen. have already, Amen. let's put it that way. But yeah. to break out of our chains and just start living life again, because it is passing us by. They said their clothes were getting too tight. They're, they're, they're getting taller. They're getting taller, yeah. but they couldn't measure them. And there's still kids not in school yet, because I, I write for a couple of different newspapers and I've yes. been interviewing people across the country on PPP loans, you know, where that help businesses and schools mm -hmm. continue to run like private schools. And um, some of the schools have been back, but not all. And it's just really tough on our kids when you think about like what our school life was like. And granted, 
Andre, you and I have homeschooled, and, and our kids will make jokes about that, but we did, they did go to high school, but we still had outside activities. I was the field trip coordinator, you know, we got out of the house. Well, and think about the kids that don't have a family like that, you know, where right. the mom and dad might not be, it might not be the, the close family. And so, you know, there's just so much that is, um, is just wrong with this whole lockdown situation that we've just got to stand up and stand up for our rights and, and let's just, just start living again. Well, Andrea, yeah. I think Grab if up. you want to write all of the lyrics, then I'll get my kids and grandkids to stand up and sing. That would be fun. I think um, she'll, you can do a stand up comedy routine without the singing. There right? you go. Because you guys are do funny. Do it. Do it. What, why don't, no, why don't you do that no, with your you, kids? You, we're <laughs> giving you this assignment, Andrea. <laughs> Your kids, you, they have to come up with a comedy act for next week. It's a good idea. You guys okay. should. It seriously mm -hmm. is. It really is. Well, that kind of brings us to the end of the show. We sure have covered a lot of topics today, all the way from energy to ice to cattle to singing to, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's just great that we have this place where we can do it. Um, God bless Rush Limbaugh. Yes. Um, I, you know, I, I can't say enough what a, what a sad day this is for America in general. But uh, join us next time on Ladies of Another View on Beck when we go over these issues and everything else that the media won't cover. Next time on Ladies of Another View on Beck. Mm -hmm.